Hi there, this is Miss Caitlin and today we are going to be doing an exercise inspired by the artist Bridget Riley. So if you want to learn a little more about her and her artwork, keep on watching. All right, so we're going to be learning about the artist Bridget Riley today and we're going to make a quick exercise about her artwork and be inspired by it. Now Bridget Riley, she's a very famous artist from England. She was born in 1931 and is still alive today. She's most famous today for her op art. Now, what is op art? Op art is a style of art that uses optical illusions. You guys have probably seen an optical illusion before. They usually are sometimes known for playing tricks on your eyes in some way. Now, what's interesting about op art is that op art is trying to show maybe movement where there really shouldn't be. What I mean by that is that the picture looks like it's moving even though it's two dimensional. They do this by using patterns and the even color like black and white to make it look like the image might be moving, the patterns might be shifting or even flashing. Now, op art is usually done in black and white, but of course today we can add color if we want to because we can just do whatever we want for our example today. But we do want to show in our piece today just one style of op art where we're using um, these kind of swelling and warping lines, which you can also see in some examples of hers as well. So here are some examples of Bridget Riley's op art. All right, so. For us today, here is our example of what we're going to be making. You can see it's very much op art like. So we're going to be doing um, the warping patterns from op, uh, op art today, which I think is going to be really easy and a really good introduction for us into op art as a style. Now, what I want you guys to do is go ahead and grab a piece of paper. It can be really any piece of paper you want today. I'm going to go ahead and grab a blank one here. Now, we want it to be vertical, up and down today. You can do it horizontal if you want to. Maybe try this one first, and then you can do lots of different versions of your own op art. Now, we need to go ahead and grab a color of sorts. I'm going to do this just right away in marker. No pencil required for this, so you can go ahead and do the same. I'm going to go ahead and break out my markers here. Now, like I said, op art is usually done in black and white. But for us today, we can really do any color we want. I'm gonna do red today, but you can choose any color. Now go ahead and put the cap of your marker on the back. The first thing that we wanna do for our example is we wanna divide this space in half. Now we wanna do a wavy line through the center of our paper here. So let's go ahead and draw a wavy line through the center of our paper. It does not need to be even by any means. Op art is very abstract. So we don't have to try and make things super duper perfect today. Now what we're gonna do is we are gonna add four wavy lines going vertical. Now the goal for these wavy lines, you want them all to be very different from each other. Um, you can try and make them, you know, sort of even in some places and then just totally different in others. But you can put them randomly like so. So start from one side. And make these wavy lines all the way down your paper. Again, we're only going to do four to start with. You can see how different all of them look. There we go. Now this doesn't look like much yet, and that's okay, because this is where the op art style comes in. We want to make this kind of look like an optical illusion. So this part's going to be a little bit tricky, but try and follow along. We're going to focus on the top half here of our artwork. So everything above this line, this area. I want you to start on one of the sections. So I'm going to start in this section over here. And we're going to make rainbow lines all the way up. So check out how I'm going to do this first, and then you try. So I'm going to make a rainbow, a rainbow, a rainbow, a rainbow, a rainbow, a rainbow, a rainbow all the way up. And I'm going to do that in each of these sections. Now you can make some of the rainbows taller, like you can see these ones are kind of wide, these ones are kind of tall. You're going to make them all the way up. 
So go ahead in each of these four sections only on the top, go ahead and make those rainbow lines. Okay, now you can also add more rainbow lines in some places. They don't have to be even, like you don't have to have the same number of rainbow lines in each section. I think this one probably has the most out of the different sections here on the top, and that's okay. That actually will work really well with the style of op art. All right, so once you finish doing all the rainbow lines in this top section, Next, we're going to do the bottom section. If you need a second to finish up the rainbow lines in the top section, you can of course pause the video and then you can unpause it when you're ready to move on. But if you are ready to move on, let's go ahead and begin on the bottom part. Now, we're not going to do rainbow lines in the bottom sections here. We're actually going to do U shapes. So it looks like, you know, they're actually these moving, not like maybe kind of like a tube shape where it's moving across our paper. So watch me do again one section and then you try. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to do a U shape, a U shape, a U shape, a U shape, all the way down. And again, you can add as many or as few as you want, but we're going to do this in all of the sections. So go ahead and start. Now you can notice as you get into these really big areas, these U shapes are going to get really big. might also be interesting maybe in some areas, especially in like the same section, maybe you have like a bunch of U shapes all bunched up together, and then you leave lots of space between the next ones. That will also make your picture look more interesting. All right, so when you're done with that section, you can put your marker away, and that's it, fairly fast, right? Now we could stop here because this already looks really cool. We can kind of see like there's this movement that's happening, even though it's two dimensional and we're not making anything move ourselves. It's our eye playing a trick on us. But if you want to be a little bit more advanced, you can shade in some of these areas. So if you want to do this more advanced bit, you might need some color pencils or some other material. Again, you can use whatever you want, but I'm going to use color pencils. So I'm going to take out my color pencils. I'm going to just move my markers out of the way. I'm going to choose probably a color that's similar to the color that I used for the line. So for me, that's going to be like a red color pencil. This is a fabulous red. I'm going to use this one. Now what you can do is you can take your color pencil and you can lightly shade the sides here of each of the sections. Now what this is eventually going to do is it's going to make the centers of these uh, sections kind of pop out more. It'll not only make it look more three-dimensional, but it'll also add to the movement of the pattern that we've made here. Now when you're using the color pencil for this part, that is if you're using color pencil for this part, if you want to get the shading to blend away so that this is white and you don't want it to just look like you stopped the color, press lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter until you can't see your color pencil on the paper anymore. And that's how you can get some pretty advanced shading. So I'm gonna take some time and shade this in for you so you can see what it'll look like and you can work along with me, but if you need to stop the video at any point to catch up, go for it, okay?
Okay, so here we have some shading. It might be a little bit difficult to see on my camera, but the color pencil is picking up where all of the shading was. Now, if you don't wanna do color pencil, you could also fill all of this in with rainbow or different colors. That also would look really cool. So I'll show you also what it can look like if you fill in all of the different sections with different colors. I'm gonna probably switch back to a marker for this one because I want them to be bright. Now this is not in line with really what Bridget Riley made necessarily, but we can have fun with it today.
All right. So I think it looks really great with that color filled into some of the spaces. Now, I kind of like this look. To me, it kind of looks like it's molten candy canes, like candy cane lava. Um, but you guys can do really whatever colors you want. If you wanted to do like a different color into the spaces that I left white, you can. Of course, all of these uh, coloring steps are extra, so they're optional. You could have just left it blank if you want, or you can make even more of these. So that is our project today, or our example today, for Bridget Riley's artwork. So remember, she it was born in 1931. She's still alive today. She's from England. She currently works and lives there. And she's most famous for her op art, which is a style of optical illusion artwork. Now, this was a lot of fun, you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Now, remember, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe, and you can click the little bell to hear when we are uploading next. If you want to share your artwork with us, you can be a member of the Fibo Village Facebook page, and you can share your artwork with us on there. Otherwise, I hope you guys had a lot of fun, and I will see you next time. Bye.